Alrighty guys, I'm gonna fill you in on a little bit of a secret. I've been playing Animal Crossing and it's been taking up my time. I wake up, I play Animal Crossing, I play Animal Crossing all day, play Animal Crossing right before I go to bed, then I go to bed. I've really been slacking on reading the books. So I need all of you to help me stay accountable. Also, you know, if you wanna be Animal Crossing friends, you know, send me a message. Hi everyone and welcome back to Big City B. I'm B for those of you who are just joining me for the first time. Let's get started on today's book review. Today I'm going to be reviewing The Dead Girls Club by Damien Angelica Walters. Here are some of the basics for the book. The genre is going to be thriller mystery and there are a few trigger warnings so make sure you check out the description below to see what those are. Alrighty, on to your summary. In 1991, Heather Cole and her friends are all members of the Dead Girl Club. Obsessed with the macabre, the girls exchange stories about real life serial killers and monsters like the Red Lady. Heather knew the stories were just that until her best friend Becca began insisting that the Red Lady was real. That belief got Becca killed. It's been nearly 30 years, but Heather has never told anyone what really happened that night. Your characters for this book. For the main characters, we have Heather Cole, Becca, Rachel, and Gia. For track two, we have Ryan, who is Heather's husband, Ellie, who is Heather's secretary, and Laura Thomas and Sarah Thomas. The first thing that I liked about this book was the format of the chapters, which was then versus now. So I like seeing adult Heather in her present day circumstances versus how preteen Heather acted. The second thing that I liked about this book was the little droppings of Shakespeare in there. We get a lot of Macbeth references. We get the washing of the hands, that is usually done by Lady Macbeth and is trying to wash the blood off of her hands even though there is nothing there. Then we also have the one, two, three, hell is murky, which was is just a great line. It really brings about the image of being in this dark, unknown place, which I think really represents well what Heather is experiencing throughout the book. The third thing that I liked about this book was another small detail, but it was Heather's picking at her, at her like um, cuticles or, or hangnails. And it was very Black Swan-esque. If you've ever seen that movie, the part where Natalie Portman is like slowly peeling her hangnail back and it like runs, ugh, it just like, it's gross, but it's also like that gross, like, ooh, awesome kind of thing. And, and Heather does that consistently, so it also shows a little bit of her neurosis as well. And this is the fourth thing that I liked. For the fourth thing I liked, it is a spoiler, and there's gonna be a couple of them in this review, so make sure you check out the description below to see when spoilers start and stop. Alrighty, here are your spoilers. So I liked how at the end we find out how Heather's mother was involved in the story. I'm not gonna spoil how her mother was involved in that night, so make sure you read this book if you wanna know what she actually did the night of Becca's death. On to things that I didn't like about this book. The first thing that I didn't like was the ending. I felt it was a little too neat and tidy and I could have had some loose threads be out there. There is technically maybe one loose thread at the ending of the book, but I just feel like too much came together and it was a little hard for me to believe. The second thing that I didn't like was that Heather's adult chapters seemed to drag a little bit more than Heather's preteen chapters. With her preteen chapters, there was a lot of action. It seemed like those chapters were also shorter than her adult life, but they were more interesting. There was more story to unfold. There was more characters. We kind of saw the evolution between Heather and Becca's friendship along those chapters. And in the adult chapters, we are very much only focused on Heather and her one track of trying to figure out and remember what happened the night of Becca's death. For the third and fourth thing that I don't like, there are gonna be spoilers. So here goes another spoiler slide. The third thing that I didn't like is that I just wanted there to be more of a twist on Becca's death. I feel it was a little anticlimactic when we actually see the scene of what really happened. Maybe the twist was how Heather's mother was actually involved, but I feel like I wanted the red lady to be an actual person 
Like it would have made sense for me if Sarah had been kind of whispering these weird crazy things to Becca like through a window or when she tried to like kidnap her on Halloween. And it could have been justified in the, in the way that she was on a drug binge or was hallucinating. So I feel like that would have made it a little bit more interesting if the red lady actually turned out to be a real person. Although I do understand it did seem like Damien was trying to explore the whole notion of how hysteria can make people do really drastic things and even start changing the way that they actually feel certain things or hear them or just on and on and on and how that can affect multiple people and not just one people. And the specific example that's given to this is in the therapy sessions where they talk about the Slenderman stabbings. The fourth thing that I didn't like about this book was that I wasn't a huge fan of the Sarah Thomas twist introduction. I don't know how believable it would be that a drug addict who was so low in where she was in her past would have kept hold of all of Becca's things. And I know that Becca was her child, but I just feel like the random books that they wrote as kids and a ribbon from her hair. I just feel like all of that would have been like too much. I could have understand her hanging on to the best friend necklace and maybe the backpack because she could have stored other things and made use out of it. But it was just hard for me to believe that Sarah would have kept a hold of those things for so long after the actual death of Becca, given that she was a drug addict. If she had been completely sober from like that point forward, then maybe I could have believed it. But from what we see when she encounters Heather at the end of the story, Story, it still seems like she's using and is a little crazy and volatile. So just some general questions that I had about this book that I want to ask you guys. If you've read this book, do you think that Becca was actually there outside the coffee shop or do you think it was part of Heather's hysteria and paranoia and she just began hallucinating the ghost of Becca? Let me know down in the comments below. The second question that I have for you is who do you think was actually the red lady? I know we're told that the red lady is kind of based on the angel that tried to take Becca when she was younger, but from the way that the red lady looks and how she acts and that she's the only one that will save Becca, it kind of made me think that it was Heather. So what do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. Who do you think the red lady was really based on? Alrighty, it's time for our Goodread takes. So I really only have two things that Goodreads didn't like about this book, but there was one review that I just wanted to point out because I thought it was so ridiculous. Here it is. No, nobody, no, no way, Jose. This was just a big old bookload of suck. The cover was gorgeous. The book was, and still is, a buttload of suck. This review was written by a 56 year old woman. How is this constructive people? How does this give feedback to anyone who's wondering if they should read the book or for the author to take notes on what people did and didn't like for her next book? I d we get it, you didn't, you didn't like the book. So give it your low star rating and move on with your day. On to the first thing that Goodreads didn't like. They thought that adult Heather's actions were unbelievable. So this is mostly in regards to the steps and actions that Heather does once she receives the first item from the night that Becca died. For me, none of it was unbelievable. Once someone gets in that space where they're so paranoid and hysteric, everything seems logical and that could mean stalking people, going back and being suspicious of everyone, hallucinating. It wasn't unbelievable to me. The second thing that Goodreads didn't like or didn't really believe was they didn't think this was a supernatural thriller. Uh... Okay, but the whole story is based on a ghost story that was told by preteen girls. So, and the main villain in the story is a ghost witch. So, um, disagree. Great. Glad we solved that. On to your quotes for this book. Your first quote. You never knew who was secretly a monster. True. You don't really know people. You only see what they want to present to you but at some point you have to have faith to believe that people are good, but also be suspicious of any red flags. If you see anything that's like, this person's a psycho or this person's a killer, like get out of there, don't stick around. I'm talking to all of you, people who think that everyone is deep down a good person. Sometimes it's not true about everyone. 
Your second quote. But no matter how well you know a person, there's always something they hold back, something they never tell anyone. Again, this one ties a little bit into the first one, but yeah, we all have secrets and we don't always tell all of our secrets to even the people that we're closest to. We all got a little bit of secret and mystery inside of ourselves that'll always be just ours. Quote number three, but when you recall an event, you aren't remembering the event itself, only the last recollection, a memory of a memory. And if the mind wants something to be real, it can rearrange facts and occurrences to suit. But I like this quote because it really shows how the mind can play against a person. And especially during this book, when we're dealing with paranoia and hysteria and how that affects everyone. And it's interesting to think about how our memories are not truly our memories. They're just what we can remember and how memories can sometimes be false. I especially thought from this quote that the book was gonna go a different angle, but alas, it is what it is. Finally, would I recommend this book? Sure, I like the book. I didn't love it and I wasn't obsessed with it, but I liked it. I felt that there were some things that I wanted Damien to delve into a little bit further, whether that was more of the relationship kind of demise between Ryan and Heather or seeing a little bit more of how Heather's mom and her interacted right after Becca's death. There were just some things that I wanted to know a little bit more and I felt like could have been flushed out. I also think that if Damien had pushed the elements of Heather's neuroses and paranoia and slightly, I think the supernatural element was in a pretty good place, but if she pushed it just a tad more, then it could have been really truly and solidly both a supernatural thriller, but also a psychological thriller. If you like, you know, supernatural thrillers, I think this is a good book. Again, this thriller was not like gripping, page turning. I need to set it down and, and like clear my head for a little bit because it's too much, but it was good. That's all I have for you guys. If you like this review, go ahead and hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed for future videos. My next book review will be coming out next Thursday. All the best always. Bye.